This is part two of the series on vector operations. I'm going to speak about uh, multiplication of vectors. And first of all, we uh, need to cover what vector multiplication is. Uh, in uh, this example, I've implemented three such operations. So vector multiplication with a scalar. This is the simplest operation where you take a scalar value and multiply each vector element with uh, that value. Uh, then we have the dot product and the Hadamard product. And for this, I open here the Wikipedia, uh, which describes uh, the dot product also known as scalar product uh, and uh, this one um, uh, takes two equal length sequences of numbers and returns a single uh, number and we have here the formula so it's um, basically a sum over uh, individual uh, products of the two vector elements uh, so this is probably what you commonly know as a vector product. But uh, there is also a Hadamard product and this one applies to matrices, but a vector is a special case of a matrix with a single line. Uh, so what is this? Uh, this is uh, simply an uh, element-wise uh, product. So the first element is multiplied with the second, with the first element from the second vector, then the second element in the first vector multiplied with the second element in the second vector, and so on. So there is no uh, summation. Okay, so now let's take a look at how we can implement this. In the previous video, I covered uh, vector initialization uh, so now let's move on to multiplication with a scalar value so what I have here in EAX I expect to have a floating point uh, number 32 bits of course in uh, RDI uh, there will be the vector that is going to be multiplied, so the address of the vector, and it will be overwritten. Uh, and in RCX, the vector size. And uh, this must be greater than zero, there is no check here. So uh, the output, uh, as I already mentioned, will be stored still in uh, the vector pointed to by the RDI register. Okay, so what happens here? First, we save the registers and uh, restore them later. Uh, and then, uh, in uh, a temporary memory location, we need to store uh, the EAX, so our scalar value. Why? Because uh, the floating point operations uh, are not able to access uh, internal. Uh, registers. Instead, uh, data transfer is happening only through uh, memory. And this stems uh, from the old uh, 8087 uh, coprocessor, uh, which was uh, in a different chip than the main uh, CPU. So obviously it uh, uh, was not able to access uh, internal CPU registers. Nowadays, uh, these uh, floating point instructions are implemented in the main chip, uh, but still uh, the architecture remains the same, so uh, floating point operations cannot directly access internal CPU registers. So uh, now that we have in this temporary location the scalar value, uh, we can load it <coughs> on the floating point stack with uh, FLD. Uh, then we can uh, use FMAL to multiply with um, the first uh, vector element. Uh, then uh, we store this and as I said we overwrite uh, the vector values. 
we increment uh, RDI. Uh, this is the address of the current vector element. Uh, we increment it by 4 uh, because we have 32-bit uh, values, so 4 bytes. And then we loop uh, back here and we compute uh, the next uh, multiplication and we store it overwriting that previous vector value. So that's it and finally we restore uh, register values and we return. So as I said this is probably the simplest uh, operation. Now <coughs> we have the dot product. So in the case of the dot product uh, we make an element wise uh, multiplication and we sum uh, the result. So in this case we have two vectors, um, RDI would be vector 1, RSI vector 2, RCX the vector size, this must be common, both vectors uh, must have the same size, and the output uh, will be returned in EAX. So again we start by uh, saving registers that will be modified. Uh, and at the end of the procedure we uh, restore them and now we first load zero onto the floating point stack uh, then we have this loop here uh, we load uh, the element from the first vector we multiply with the corresponding element from the second vector uh, and then uh, we add uh, this with uh, the other value uh, from the floating point stacks initially with zero <coughs> but then uh, on the stack will remain only this uh, sum so the next element will be inserted on top of the stack it will be multiplied and it will be uh, added to the previous sum and so on so at the end of this uh, loop here uh, on the stack uh, we'll have uh, the result okay and in order to continue the loop uh, we increment both RDI and RSI in order to move to the next element from the two vectors uh, after the loop is finished uh, first we store uh, the top of the stack in a temporary memory location and then we read uh, this into EAX uh, this is again uh, because of what I said at the previous operation the floating point operations are not able to access internal CPU registers uh, due to the architectural design so we need to use a temporary memory location for this and now the last operation the Hadamard product uh, again we have uh, vector 1 uh, pointed by RDI, vector 2 RSI, uh, in RCX the vector size, again the two vectors must have the same size, uh, and the result uh, will be stored in RDI, because uh, in this case uh, the result is not a scalar, but the result is a vector, so we overwrite uh, vector 1. Uh, so what's happening here again we start by saving the registers at the end the registers will be restored and we have this time a somewhat simpler uh, loop so we load uh, on the floating point stack uh, first the element from the first vector we multiply with the corresponding element in the second vector and we store the result uh, in the first vector uh, then again we proceed to the next elements, RDI and RSI are incremented by 4 so that we take into account that these are 32-bit values and finally we loop uh, here yeah. and uh, that's it, this is uh, somewhat simpler than the previous uh, function so now let's take a look at a small test program uh, so we start uh, by initializing uh, vector 
one with uh, the value two, vector two with uh, value 1.5. Uh, these vectors are here, both have uh, space for 10 elements. Uh, I also have uh, messages here uh, that will display dot product, Hadamard product, scalar product, and uh, buffer for uh, displaying uh, floating point values. Okay, so the two vectors were initialized, and then I'm calling here uh, the function for uh, computing dot product. And the result uh, will be stored in EAX. Then I'm displaying the message for the dot product. I'm converting the result from EAX uh, to the F32 buffer. And then the F32 buffer will be uh, displayed. So that we have, uh, we should see now uh, the uh, result. Uh, now I'm uh, running the Hadamard product. Again, I'm uh, displaying uh, first the message and then uh, I'm writing the result, which uh, remember will be uh, stored in the first vector. And the values will be override, overwritten. Uh, and then uh, I'm uh, multiplying uh, this first vector with a scalar which is 1.5 and again I'm uh, displaying uh, first the message and then the vector uh, and that's it uh, we'll exit to the operating system so let's build again the build script is similar to the previous uh, videos that I made and I'm uh, executing it and let's see so we have uh, dot product uh, 30 again let's uh, see we have uh, two uh, for the uh, in the first vector so 10 uh, values of 2 and then 10 values of 1.5 so basically uh, 2 times 1.5 is 3 and we have this uh, 10 times so yeah it makes sense uh, dot product is 30. Hadamard product uh, as I said 2 times 1.5 is 3 so we see now 3 uh, in the first vector and then we have a scalar product and remember we multiply uh, this so 3 3 3 3 with 1.5 so yeah it makes uh, 4.5 okay so i hope you enjoyed this uh, video so don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time bye